yeah, we're based up in Manchester and the point of the organization is to basically so it was it's a it's a cooperative of householders who want to do something practical about climate change. So when they started looking into this about 10 years ago, sort of with lots of information that actually the first commentator spoke about, we sort of realized that housing was a really big part of the climate problem in the UK and a, a difficult one to solve because obviously most of the housing is going to still be here. Um, there's lots of different types of you know private homeowners and social housing different kinds of tenures and trying to see how do we reduce emissions and that is quite a sticky problem so we decided that's where we'd focus um so over the years um so i've been i've been invited to speak today about some work i've done around people-centered approaches so like how do you put people first when looking at um retrofit in the context of social housing um, and where this came from is that a lot of our membership in Carbon Co-op are mostly people who are able to pay so they can afford to pay for their own retrofits and I really noticed the inequality between those who are able to pay and those who are recipients of funded schemes. Um, lots of inequalities around the quality of the work and the choice around how that work's done um, and you know there have been lots of schemes over the last 10 plus years um, and there's been quite a lot of problems with those schemes and there's loads of issues around that which I won't have too much time to get into now um, but some of the big ones are around sort of the funding available and what that does and doesn't fund and the timescales around that um, issues around the construction industry and sort of um, often how how the construction industry approaches retrofit sometimes and procurement and also importantly I noticed a big gap in how residents are valued in those schemes or not valued in those schemes and how much any work with residents is resourced or not. Um, there have been some big improvements recently through something called PAS 2035, which is around standards for retrofit, which is really great, but that still doesn't quite deal with some of these other tricky issues. So when I was looking at this, I sort of, I got some funding to do a bit of research and I decided to look at um, just as someone, I think Richard just said that like retrofit's often seen as a technical issue um, rather than an issue around people. And actually homes are essentially people, like people are so fundamental to their homes, the way that they live in their homes are re is really important. So I decided to look at, turn it on its head and go, well, what's important to people when you're looking at doing retrofit on a, on a, in a social housing context or in a context where someone is accessing sort of money from government um, and um, how do we make sure that all the other elements like the funding and the industry and the procurement and the sort of work for people rather than people being the last in the list that those things you know end up doing to them. Um, so I'm just going to talk a quickly a little bit about why taking a people-centered approach so kind of taking people first is important. Um, it's one of the key things, so there's this term called the performance gap, which you might hear people say sometimes. What that means is um, when an architect or a scheme manager models a scheme, they'll look at how much carbon emissions they're expecting to save through installing different insulation measures. Um, and the reality of what happens when someone actually puts insulation or some kind of does some work like air tightness or maintenance on the house, um, often it would be different to what they thought it would be. And the difference of those two things is called the performance gap. So there's lots of different reasons for why there might be a large performance gap. What we wanna do is reduce that because we want to save as much emissions as we can and make sure people live in warm and comfortable homes. Um, and there are different things that cause that problem. So it might be the quality of the work. So it might be some design problems. But another important aspect of that is people, because how people live in their homes and how they use energy will have an impact. So if people aren't really engaged in a scheme because it's been done to them, they may well not know or understand how to use the new heating system that's been installed or they may not understand completely the ventilation system or you know they might use heating in a way that they used to before and leave windows open all sorts of different things which aren't actually their fault it's because they weren't really engaged in the scheme from the start they don't really know how to use the technology so it's really important that um, people are really engaged and if you take a people-centered approach uh, there's examples where actually if people are respected and sort of worked well with throughout a scheme, they're much more likely to engage fully in why the scheme's being done 
and also encourage their friends and neighbours and other people to get involved if the scheme is trying to get more people to sign up. So it's it makes sense in a lot of ways for the kind of value for what a, a council or a social housing provider or you know another scheme manager might might want. It does make a lot of sense to make sure that people are well engaged. Um, also, there's there's found that there's fewer issues in terms of when we get to site in terms of doing the construction works and half post works if you've got people on board um is some of the findings i found from my research also i just think it's the right thing to do i think it's important to treat people well and as people rather than subjects of a scheme um some something to work around um so in so i created a toolkit and i'll share the link to it in the chat and what it does is go through the stages of a retrofit. I'm using this word retrofit a lot and I hope I'm I hope we're getting the idea of what that means. It just means adding insulation to an existing building. Um, so in this in this report, um, it basically goes through the different stages of a scheme. So the initial contact and sign up, the survey stage, the design stage, the point at which the installation measures are being installed and the tightness measures are being installed so on site and then after works and each stage asks it sort of looks at from having done interviews and some desk based research looked at what's the experience of the resident at each one of those stages what's important to them that happens why is that important and how that can be taken into account by scheme managers and so i just for a couple more minutes let me know if i'm going over time i'll just give some examples of what that means how am i going over time <laughs> starting to but it's really okay. interesting so they, they do go ahead with a couple of examples Thanks, okay Anika. and just so, um we were just thinking when you're talking about um scheme you're talking about like things being done in a social housing context to a lot of different houses is that right yeah so so you might have um the the, the social housing might have won some money there's a social housing decarbonisation fund at the moment for example so they might have got a certain amount of money and they can insulate 100 homes in in their housing okay. stocks so that would be like a scheme that they'll be running for a year or two right. for example thank you um no that's okay um so for example so um at the initial contact phase so this might not be social housing this might be for something called eco which is kind of money that comes from suppliers um sometimes the paperwork can be really complex and there isn't that much support to help people get through that paperwork so those who are particularly vulnerable might not engage with a scheme when they really should like it would be really helpful for them to engage because of that complexity so you know taking a people-centered approach you would minimize paperwork where possible um or at the survey stage sort of making sure that appointments are kept too so we've got often problems this is true all through the whole process actually in particular the on-site phase where often you have sort of construction companies that are coming from across the country this might not be the case in london so much but certainly other parts of the country you have construction companies coming from very far away and then if there are one cancellation then they might cancel everything else because you know it's too far for them to travel for not to not see everybody but then that means that some people might change their work for example and be messed around essentially and then drop out the scheme because they'll say well actually you haven't turned up to two appointments in a row and i don't want to do this um at the design stage for example you could give space so there was a really great scheme in portsmouth where they didn't um the council were upgrading a big tower block and they had open days and retro they sort of did works on a pilot flat so that people could actually come into the flat and have a look at what was proposed and actually get a feel for it and then talk to have meaningful conversations with the design team about what they thought about that and whether that does or doesn't work for them which means you can really meaningfully involve people in what's going on and actually things that were important to them that don't matter for energy efficiency were brought up and brought into the into the design work which is actually really important because again these are people's homes um you know I, at the I think um, I'm, I'm probably gonna stop. Have okay. to, yeah <laughs> so I guess what I'm trying to say is is that it's really important that we take a people-centered approach um and that needs to be valued but also resourced so paid for and that's often missing in a lot of funding environment like funding that's available at the moment um I've done a longer talk on this so I'll just share the link so you can look at the report and my longer talk if you're interested in finding out more but thanks for having me along